The big story out of Washington yesterday was the hearing on Capitol Hill. Senators uh, talking with James Comey, the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Liberals apparently feel he has, uh, he, has, he has given them the excuse for losing the election, and that is in the waning days of what was going on. He issued, a, he issued a statement that they were reopening an investigation into Hillary Clinton and her search, or her rather use of an illegal server when she was working at the, the State Department. And now liberals are saying, see, we told you, that's why we lost the election. People suddenly said, we can't trust her. We'll vote for Donald Trump. However, Comey did apologize if it impacted the election. But indeed, it does seem that Hillary Clinton made her own bed in this particular situation. And that part of it, Democrats and their fellow travelers, the propaganda wing of the Democrat Party over at the New York Times, Washington Post, CBS, NBC, ABC, CNN, and MSDNC, refused to acknowledge. In their view, well, she didn't do anything wrong. Well, of course she did something wrong. We still don't know what was on 33,000 of those emails. They managed to completely get rid of those to wash those clean. What did she say when somebody asked her if, they, if she'd wiped the server? She said, what do you mean, with a cloth? <laughs> yeah, Hillary, uh, just keep going down that road. The media didn't even find that one funny, although they generally did whatever they could to promote her campaign. The, the problem for her is she's a liar and she's dishonest, and if she hadn't been those things, maybe she would be president. Thankfully for us, I guess, the American voters caught on, even if Jim Comey is saying, gee, I'm sorry for letting people know she was a liar and dishonest. Media is ignoring one specific area that has been, I think, uh, <laughs> well, in other words, you got to cherry pick this story. Daily Caller has this. Huma Abedin forwarded Hillary Clinton's emails, some of them classified, to her disgraced husband, Anthony Weiner. That from James Comey during his testimony yesterday. Quote, I don't think we've been able to interview him because he has pending criminal problems of other sorts, but my understanding is that his role would be to print them out as a matter of convenience, unquote, said Comey. And he's referring to Weiner. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, folks, but... It seems to me that that would, that would imply that they were mishandling classified information. You may remember David Petraeus, an American hero, was convicted for that sort of thing. And yet Democrats are angry that their girl didn't get to be president. Maxine Waters is out there saying, Donald Trump, he needs to be impeached. And you've got the Democrats saying, on the other hand, it's okay for Hillary Clinton to do things far worse than David Petraeus, and she should be our president. And that way, she wouldn't be signing this order today protecting people, people's First Amendment rights. We can't allow that. Those mean Christians are going to do what they want now. Ten minutes after 9 o'clock, 54. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And I want to point out, too, as well, our telephone number, 736-0300. Caller, you're on the air. Yeah, last hour before you had your guest on for 10 minutes, there was a gentleman who called in, and I never met him, but I know where he's from. I'd like to meet him. And, uh, you know, I get excited. He gets excited. But, you see, if we didn't love our country, if we didn't love our family, we wouldn't be upset. You know, you got to have be smart enough to know that when you see the decline of your country and you say, this is going to affect me and my children and my grandchildren, and you say, am I going to sit idly by and do nothing? Or am I going to do whatever I can? Now, I understand that calling into the Bill Cully program may or may not have a whole hell of a lot of influence on anybody. Maybe they just think I'm loud and obnoxious. <laughs> but this is the thing. It, it you is too. You too. We're in the same boat. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people that listen to this program, Bill, that are, you know, everybody's so shy. They don't want to call in for fear somebody might recognize their voice and they might go against the grain. Uh, like my daughter on that, on the gender symbols at the rock last week she said yes i'm for traditional 
you know, genders, and she got hit up by her very girl friend. And, of course, you covered that. But, you see, she says, I didn't change my mind. I'm not going to stop, you know. When you see de decadence, decay, decline, you know that it's going to suck us all down the toilet bowl. And so I don't know, but I know this. If I give every bit of effort I can to do the right thing, that I believe that, uh, you know, if I work hard, that opportunity comes my way. And if enough of us do the right thing, you know, I believe that that's how we create a miracle. Thanks, Bill. Thank you much for the call. I, I was thinking, he, he mentioned people, they listen if they don't, they're not familiar with talk radio. They think, oh, it's just a bunch of angry people venting. I remember when the Tea Party movement got started, and I mentioned this before. Uh, if you've ever read the book, The Backlash, well, it's written by the Huffington Post columnist, Will Bunch, and he's also a newspaper man in Philadelphia. He's a liberal, and I guess you wouldn't really want to read that book, but the, my, my sister joked, she bought a copy of it because he interviewed me, and my sister said, most of the first chapter is about you. And in fact, he credited me, of all people, working at a tiny radio station in a small town in southern Delaware way back in 2009 with being really the guy who kicked off the Tea Party movement, and not so much Rick Santelli from CNBC, who generally gets the credit for that. And Bunch was focused on the fact that I talked about a congressman who had been a Republican, but he kept going against the voters, his Republican voters. He had a town hall meeting, and these things used to attract about 1,200 people. Well, hundreds of people showed up because I talked about it on the radio and said, we've got to let them know what we believe. And and it became a, liberals were writing about it who hadn't been there and didn't have any of the facts. And it, it turned out to be, though, really the impetus and there were even TV commercials about people shouting at town hall meetings. And then I was at the first two really big Tea Party rallies in Washington. I was at the Glenn Beck rally. I was also at the Capitol building when Michelle Bachman put out a call and 25,000 of us showed up on short notice to demonstrate that March weekend seven years ago when Obamacare passed. So I was at the, 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 the birthing of this whole movement. And one of those summers, I got invited to MC one of these events outside a state capitol back on the East Coast. And I came down off the podium after introducing a guest, and a fellow stopped me. And he said, you know, mainstream media says we're all angry. He said, I, I, I want to tell you they're right, but we're angry for all of the right reasons. And then struck me, yes, we are angry for the right reasons. Now, today... Media tells you, well, they told you the Occupy demonstrations were just a public outpouring, and, you know, it's the poor showing that the United States is an unfair country and that they need Bernie Sanders to come and take your stuff away and give it to them so they can continue to hang around in city parks, raping people in tents and crapping on police cars. They tell you that all these demonstrations in Portland, Oregon the other day that turned violent are okay, and it's just the people showing that they're angry about the way the world is. The former mayor of Baltimore, Maryland, said about all of the criminals who nearly burned her city down two years ago that they had to let them get out there and express themselves before they clamped down on it. And, and yet the Tea Party movement was supposedly mean and angry and rotten. Nobody ever got beat up at a Tea Party rally. Nobody ever smashed windows or set fires. Nobody got raped. Nobody crapped on police cars. Which one of these does the media say was wrong? You get my drift? 915 55. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air. Well, you were pretty close. 736 0300. 736 0300. The number for reaching our program today. And now all of the Democrats belly aching that their girl didn't win. Well, if she hadn't been such a urine-poor candidate, she might have actually pulled it off. The fact of the matter is, Democrats, I saw this this morning at the resurgence, lawyers for the DNC argued in court yesterday and admitted that they had rigged the system so that Bernie Sanders could not win the nomination. Why even bother to have primaries? How can you call yourself Democrats, small-D Democrats? You certainly aren't. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Good morning, Bill. 
Uh, that gentleman that called in about a half hour ago that went on that tirade, I think I have a man crush on him. That is exactly <laughs> how I feel. He, he nailed it, and and you could hear the passion in his voice. He's representing 80% of us out here that's just flat had it, you know. And if our Republicans don't get off their dead butt, 18's coming, and we need to flush 80% of them away. They've, they've used all their excuses. We need this. We need more. We need more time. How come everything comes down to the last day? We got to get her done. This is, they would be fired on the outside and they're scared because if they get out there, they won't get a job. That's exactly what Raul Raul Labrador said. Thank you for the call. Raul Labrador said yesterday, too many people in his own party are too timid. And he pointed out he went out in front of a hostile crowd last week at a town hall meeting and he spent three hours, but he never once told them, well, gee, well, liquor's okay. I'll do what you say. He stuck to his guns. The fact of the matter is, he pointed out, we control as Republicans just about every major office in the country now, national, state, and local, and we still have people out there who want to put their, are they really Republicans? Well, somebody over at the country club might not like it if we do that. I'm sorry. Why don't you start addressing your constituents? Next caller, you're up next. Good morning, Bill. We all know that our Republicans have no... Never mind. But, you know, it, it's, it's, we, we, we all know that they, just like the music industry where somebody would change genres because they couldn't make it in one, a lot of our Republicans now used to be Democrats, couldn't make it in the Democrats, so come to that side. But, you know, as far as our liberal friends are concerned, it's amazing how they cannot look in the mirror and blame themselves for anything, for anything. Hillary is just making every excuse in the world why she lost instead of looking in the mirror and saying, it was all my fault for putting that computer in a closet. I mean, they they, they sat there and said it was Comey's fault. Well, did Comey put the computer in the closet? No, he covered up for her and kept her out of jail. If anything, she, she should be kissing his behind. So, you know, these guys, they need to wake up in the mirror and wake up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, some of the stuff that goes wrong today, somebody may instigate, but it probably was my fault. Well said. And, and, you know, Hillary Clinton, and and I'll add this, got to take a short break in a moment, but she somehow believes that by playing the victim right now that the Democrats are going to welcome her back in 2020 and say, oh, this time we'll get it right. She lost to an upstart in 2008. She lost to a guy nobody said she should have had any business losing to in 2016. And she somehow believes, as she continues to cry and whine, that her party's going to say, oh, please come back and take us to the promised land. She's inept. She's incompetent. She's an empty suit. Well, empty pants suit in this case. 20 minutes after 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and more of your telephone calls in a few minutes. News Radio 1310.com. Also, we're at 57 already, on our way somewhere into the low 80s today. Won't that be nice? Yes, uh, the snowflakes in the Democrat Party. There's a great piece in The Atlantic today, and it shows Hillary Clinton supporters on election night crying into their own hands. <laughs> but but the media told me. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Now my feelings are hurt. You need to make it better and make her president anyway. We're at 56. It's 922 on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Thanks for joining us on this wonderful day today. I wanted to mention that a lot of you people out there would feel better if you actually had some notion in life that you're going to be secure when you get to be a little older in life, I'd like to recommend you get in touch with the folks at Waddell & Reed. They have an office right here in Twin Falls as well. Waddell & Reed is one of the oldest firms offering mutual funds in the country. And in fact, Waddell & Reed owns and manages two mutual fund families. This is a firm that invests by a conservative nature and helps build proper expectations. Do they know what they're doing? Again, 80 years now in business. And they will work with you individually because they know that each and every one of you has individual needs and goals. No two people are the same. Waddell and Reed helps manage money, and Waddell and Reed takes planning personally. 
Telephone number for reaching our program today, 736-0300, 736-0300. According to this story in The Atlantic, Democrats' confidence in government has plummeted since the last Pew survey two years ago. Well, of course, back then they thought that, you know, workers of the world unite, socialism forever. And now they're faced with a grim reality that uh, their workers' uh, workers' paradise didn't come around. Of course, their party is sold out to Wall Street. I don't know how they ever got that impression in the first place. The writer says in 2015, while Barack Obama was still president, a full 50% of self-identified Democrats and people who lean toward the Democrat Party reported feeling quite confident in the future of the United States. Now that was, even with their guy in the White House, only half felt confident. Now, only 28% feel that way. Democrats who say they feel very little or no confidence at all in the country's future increased from 12% in 2015 to 34% in 2017. Trust in government among Republican voters has risen in the aftermath of the election, the writer says, and so has confidence in the country's future, while anger at the government has lessened. But I should point out, when you hear this figure in a moment, (laughs) <laughs> the current share of Republicans who say they trust the government at least most of the time, 28% is considerably higher than throughout much of the Obama administration. So just a little more than a quarter of Republicans surveyed, even with Republicans in control of the House, Senate, and the White House, say that they have confidence in government, which tells you, like the last caller pointed out, Republicans are still waiting for Republican office holders to act like Republicans. 736-0300, the number to reach our program today. And you're up next. You're on Top Story. Bill, if Hillary should have won Arkansas in a landslide, but Arkansas voted for Trump. The people in Arkansas didn't like Bill having Paula Jones brought into a hotel room and then exposing his penis to her. Then Hillary and James Carville demeaned Paula. If Bill was a GOP governor, the media would have had him castrated. (laughs) And probably a few husbands out there, too, as well, over the years. Thanks for the call, 925. It's 57. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You realize when the Clintons, as a team, first got involved in politics in Arkansas, things did not go well because Hillary Clinton ran around the state as a woman's liver and calling herself Hillary Rodham. And just in a place like Arkansas, which is, you know, deeply Baptist and deeply traditional, people didn't go for that sort of thing. So she stopped wearing the mod hairdo and got rid of the ugly glasses and started calling herself Hillary Clinton. They came back around again and won the next election. But it was a a lesson for the Clintons, which is why in the 1990s as president, even though he talked a liberal game when he ran, that what they what they call a triangulation, and the media said, oh, very good, Bill Clinton is triangulating. Whatever the heck that means. In other words, he's, he's, he's doing what, when I was a kid growing up, a very young boy in New York State, and again, I say New York State because people, if you say New York, they think I was growing up in some high-rise on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, growing up in a dairy farming town with two traffic lights, eight hours drive from New York City, we had a governor named Nelson Rockefeller who claimed to be a Republican, but he gave everybody everything they wanted. There's a great book called I Never Wanted to Be Vice President of Anything. It's a, the title is from a phrase uh, when, when he briefly served as vice president in the 1970s about how terrible the job was. But he, he simply co-opted everybody in government, Republicans and Democrats, by saying, well, here's a little bit of cash for you, and here's, here's, here's some diamonds for you, and here's a pile of gold for you. And eventually he bankrupted his state. Arnold Schwarzenegger did the same thing in California. You talk a good game, and then you come in and you say, gee, I can keep winning elections if I give everybody the moon, sun, and stars, and to heck with how much it's going to cost us. It's a failure. And you've got a lot of Republicans. Today they're voting for this health care bill. This is, well, we're repealing Obamacare. today. <laughs> come on. There's a few things in it that will change the way it's done. As Raul Labrador said yesterday, it's a good start because You're going to turn some control over to the states. But again, Republicans, they didn't have a plan in place. 
and they've been just groping around. You know, the media is not nice to them in the first place, and then they give the media more ammunition. This is what mainstream media ignores. This comes out of the conservative Washington Examiner. For the first time in 2017, many of the nation's counties, about one-third of them, had only one insurer available on their respective Obamacare health insurance exchanges. Next year may be the first in which there are zero Obamacare insurers in some U.S. counties. The Des Moines Register reports that after at the exit of Aetna and Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield from Iowa's exchange, the only other insurer in 94 of Iowa's 99 counties is plotting to exit as well. So by the end of this year, 94 of 99 counties in that state, often confused with Idaho even though it's 1,000 miles away, will have no insurance company working with Obamacare or whatever the Republicans are calling their replacement plan. The writer says, thanks to two of the important Obamacare rules that are a constant subject of discussion, community rating, which requires that everyone of the same age be offered the same price for coverage, and guaranteed issue, which requires that all applicants be accepted regardless of pre-existing conditions. This notion that if you're 28 and you've got uh, melanoma, and if you're 28 and you don't, you should both pay the same price, this is where liberals don't understand. These are private insurers. These are people who are putting, they've got, they've got people called shareholders who put their money in this not to lose their money. There's a reason that if you're 28 and you've got two DUIs and another guy is 28 and a teetotaler, that you pay different costs when it comes to insurance. And maybe the guy with DUIs can't get any. It's because it's called a risk. And the shareholders, they're not there to just fritter their money away. It may sound cold-hearted, but that's how it works. It's 56, 930. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio. More on this subject coming up in just a minute.